What's going on guys? Repairs and Reviews here. Today I'm going to be servicing my RZ5424 Husqvarna. It is a 54 inch zero turn. Uh, I have a review on this unit uh, in another video if you're curious to know what I think about it. Uh, it's been a good machine to me. So it's time to uh, service it up before the year. Uh, this is the maintenance kit that I got from my local parts distributor. Um, I, I actually have a small engine distributor very close to me that carries this and about any other part you could ever imagine for any of your lawnmower needs. So um, the part number to this it's that right there. And this services the Kohler Courage 20 to 27 horsepower twin cylinder. And I believe I have a 24. Yeah, I've got a 24. So get all your parts. To change the oil on my unit, you will need a 13 16 and an 11 16 wrench. Spark plugs will need a ratchet and a 5 8 socket. I just have an extension, makes it easier to get to. The oil filter. Just your average uh, oil filter pliers. The fuel filter will need some pliers, and I have this fork tool. This is actually a door panel tool, but it works good for getting around uh, fuel lines and prying fuel lines off of things. Uh, to grease it, um, a grease gun with the grease of your choice. I think I have some pretty good high quality synthetic some sort of grease um, it was like 10 cent more than the regular so whatever uh, the gauge tire gauge and filler to uh, set the correct tire pressure and to either remove replace or sharpen your blades if you don't have an impact and this is a uh, 5 8 socket. Uh, this unit takes a 5 8. If you don't have an impact, you can use a ratchet and a block of wood to wedge the blade so that you can actually turn this. So uh, that's what I'll be using. I will actually be uh, sharpening the blades in a separate video so I don't make this too long. I'm going to be very brief. But And also a uh, oil catch pan. And this unit holds about two quarts of oil, so anything that's capable of holding two quarts, you should be good. So let's get started. Okay, here we are at the side of the engine. This is your drain plug right here. It's on a little hose, uh, and it runs to the side of the engine. And this, in my case, is an 11 16 to hold the line still, and a 13 16 to break it loose. So. And I prefer, and I do this for all my customers and my personal stuff, um, to run the engine and get it hot, um, at least warm. So be careful, you know, the exhaust here, um, just so I can get the oil to flow better. Uh, when it's warm or hot, it will. Uh, drain faster and pull the dipstick out so it gets some air and it can uh, vent Get this off. now this is a personal preference um, but what I have done since this is on the left side of the engine I have actually put a uh, block of wood on the right side of the wheel so it elevates this side of the engine and pretty much will guarantee um, the maximum amount of oil drained. So we're going to go ahead and let this drain and I'll be right back. Okay, we finished draining here. It's just slowly dripping. So I'm going to reinstall my cap. Hold the line here and snug the cap back up. To 
a little uh, awkward to get to, but it could be worse. You could have to go all the way to the side of the block, so at least they gave you this hose, I guess. Just snug this up pretty good, so guaranteed it's not going anywhere. And that's it for that. Let's move on to the oil filter. Alright, the oil filter is this yellow thing. We're sitting right down there. Uh, it is on the right side of the engine. Kind of hard to miss. And this is the fun part. Let's see if I can get a good angle. Do you see that little slit? I don't know if you can see it. Right there. There's a little cut in the frame. Right in the middle of the picture. Um, loosen the oil filter and the oil will drain in that little cut in the frame and that will help save you a mess. So what I've done here I've put a funnel to direct the oil away from my axle and start draining it so we'll see how that works. Let's go in here. Just grab it, turn it to the left. Don't fully remove it yet. You want it to start draining through the uh, little slit so hopefully you don't make too big of a mess. Let's go slowly. It's probably still going to make a mess, but in theory they thought this little cut in the frame would work. So, I'm going to let this drain and clean this up. It did make a mess uh, a little bit, uh, but I, I figured I'd turn it back on to show you this. Um, there's the mounting surface. Uh, it's, it's nice and shiny. And this actually just fell off of it. This is the gasket for your oil filter. You want to make sure that this filter gasket is off of the block because if you double up and put a new filter on top of it you're gonna have a uh, pretty bad oil leak so you can see where it came off the filter just pay special attention and, and make sure that you get that uh, o-ring off of there in some cases I would pre-fill this filter um, as much as I could and then you know spin it on but since it sits sideways there's really uh, no point. You're going to make a huge mess. But I did um, just lightly oil the gasket with some fresh oil. So let's spin this back on here. Let's get a better shot at it. Until it makes contact and then give it a couple good turns here and that's probably good now it's time to fill the oil uh, this engine should hold um, almost two if not the full two quarts of oil and Kohler engines do run 10w30 so I did uh, get a funnel so I don't make a huge mess on camera. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fill this up and I will let you know exactly how much it took. Alright, I've added the oil. I have uh, run the engine for about you know, a little less than a minute. That way it cycles all through the engine and uh, is able to go through the oil filter and fill that up. So. It is right on the money, and that is two quarts, exactly. So this engine holds two quarts. Um, I'm not telling you to pour two quarts in here and don't check it. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, this this holds right at two quarts. Um, everything could be different, so just make sure you're checking the actual level and not just dumping some oil in there. So let's move on to the fuel filter going to be viewing this through the uh, 
wheel well here and I'm going to be doing it from the top. Um, one thing I didn't mention, if you have access to it, um, to prevent you know, a huge mess, get uh, some needle nose pliers or uh, vice grips. And this is a fuel shut off right here. So just go ahead and shut the actual flow of fuel off to the filter and then clamp the um, line right about here just to try to prevent the mess that is uh, inevitably going to happen. Let's take these off. This is where I stick my pry tool right here. Just wiggle it back and forth. that. Do the other one the same way. And you're going to want to take note which direction this filter is going um, from the fuel tanks to the engine. And I don't know if this is an arrow that you can see, but I will show you the arrow that the new one has. Of course, I made a huge mess of fuel anyway, but it's going to happen. Okay, this has an arrow on it, and the flow of fuel is from the fuel tanks, which is the line that dropped down, to the engine. So, just put it back just how the other one was. right back into place. <clears throat> don't forget to turn your fuel back on when you're done. And don't forget to take your pliers off when you're done. And that's how to replace the fuel filter. Move on to the air filter here. And this is very simple. Just pop this cover up. There's a little thing here, you just push it down and pull it out. It's just got little hooks here. Pull this back. Be careful, depending on how dirty this is, you don't want to drop anything down the uh, into your carburetor, which I pretty much just did a little tiny bit, but not too bad. If it's real bad in here, I'm going to do it just to do it. It's not actually that bad. Just uh, take a paper towel and just wipe it out very carefully. Again, avoiding getting anything in the uh, what leads to the carburetor. Just wipe the area where it seals to guarantee that you have a uh, good seal when you go back together. And it's as simple as dropping it right back into place. It's a little tighter than you would think. There we go. Just going to drop this right back down and you might hear it click right past the hooks to where it's held in place. Set it back down. On to the spark plugs. We're going to start with this side. You just take the boot here, and pull it back, and it will unclip. Sometimes pulling them straight will be difficult to unclip. So if you just tilt it at a slight angle, it will normally pop right off. It should be a 5 8 socket. Alright, 
And this engine was uh, running great, so I'm not concerned in the least of, you know, if, if I have a fouled plug or if the gap was off or anything. So if you don't have a gap tool for a new plug, and they should come pre-gapped, but uh, if you don't have a gap tool, just kind of, you know, compare the old, which was running fine, to the new. And, you know, the only way that the new one should be out of uh, adjustment is if it was dropped and it closed the gap or you know something along those lines it, it, it should be pre-gapped and this looks pretty good to me so we're gonna put that back in there Now, I have a long ratchet here, but this is not something that you want to over tighten. So just grip it here and give it a nice little tug. Just to snug it up, just like that, and put the cap back on. And you'll hear a nice click. Just like that. Let's move to the other side. Procedure for this side. Let's unclip it here. Take it out. Looks good to me. No signs of fouling or uh, anything along those lines. Take the new one out. I will visually compare the two. I've never really had a problem with any spark plug unless it was, like I said, dropped. So, uh, you know, typically you pull a new spark plug out of the box, it should be ready to go. So I'm not real worried about it. Same as the other side, just grab and snug it right on up, just like that. And the spark plugs are done. We just got a couple more things to do here. One of them being greasing the spindles and all the fittings you can find. Um, one thing I like about this mower, it has grease fittings on all the spindles. So there's a fitting here. There's a fitting under this cover on the center spindle. There's one over here. Right there. Those are the three uh, deck spindles. Then you have one here for this pivot point, one on the other side, and then you have one on each wheel. And there it is on this wheel, and there it is on this wheel. So I'm not going to grease it all on camera, but uh, I will set one up and uh, just give you an example. So let's start with the middle spindle here. Hopefully. So I'm, I just unscrewed this. Take this plate out. You can see this fitting right here. Um, <clears throat> if there's any dirt or debris around this fitting, go ahead and wipe that off so that you don't push any dirt into the fitting. So you just want to take a grease gun and give it five or six good uh, squirts there. You know, the, the, the spindles won't purge grease. I mean, I guess they will if you load it up, but um, you don't have to pump till your hand is numb on these spindles. Just give it five or six good ones, uh, move to the wheels. You can purge grease on the wheels if you want, 
Uh, it's a preference. Just make sure it's it's greased and lubed up and ready for the season. What you want to do at this point, uh, if you have this cover off, uh, and you could also take these covers off um, and you know scrape any debris. Uh, I cut grass yesterday, so this is kind of left over from that. So, but another thing you want to do is just inspect your belts and any pulleys and make sure there's no cracks or splitting or dry rot on any of these belts. Um, this actually looks really good. Uh, I have no concern for this belt. Um, also do the same thing on the pump drive belt that drives the wheels. It's a little more difficult to get to, but you can lay on your back on the uh, back side of this and be able to inspect it. One thing that is often overlooked uh, in any service is the tires. Uh, so at this point, just take, you know, inspect the tires, make sure it's not dry rotting down here, and of course check the air pressure and make sure there's even any in it. Uh, I've taken the cap off. Some of these bigger wheels, uh, and they're, they're, there's a lot bigger than these, but um, some of these bigger wheels can be completely flat and you won't even know because the rubber is so hard. So uh, take your gauge and these don't hold a whole lot of air. See I have mine set to 12 and it is still dead on from last season basically so I'm going to leave them at 12. Uh, caution on these zero turns if you put too much air in your rear tires uh, it will make them hard and you will get stuck. Uh, this is a fairly heavy machine, so you will get stuck in your yard if it's wet, damp, if you're on a hill, and this tire will actually spin on the grass, whether it's wet or dry, a lot easier because it's a lot harder when there's a lot of air in it. So keep that in mind. If you're tearing up your yard with a zero turn, uh, you might want to consider lowering your tire pressure. 12 might actually be too high for me, but uh, I know to control it. I'm real easy on the controls, so um, I set mine to 12. You might want to set yours to 8 or 10 if you have problems tearing up your yard. So um, the front wheels, they can be, I think I have mine set to 15. I'm not going to actually check them on camera, but uh, the rear wheels is what tears up the ground. The front wheels can be 15, 20, uh, whatever the tire is rated, but uh, that's how you do tire pressure. Okay, the last part to any service uh, is, of course, the blades. Now, once you have uh, secured your mower on jack stands and um, everything is safe, you can come up under the under the deck here and. These blades I put on probably mid last season, so they're still sharp, but I'm going to sharpen them anyway, uh, and I'm actually going to do a separate video showing you how to do that, but, or, or my, how I do that, everyone does it a little bit differently, but um, my blades are held on with a 5 8 bolt, so you can put it on your impact. Just take those off like that, or what you can also do is get you a ratchet, and you can see this one. You want to, you're going to be turning it counterclockwise, wedge a block of wood in between the blade and the deck. And it will allow you to put a socket on this and turn it and break it loose with the ratchet because it's it's held by the block of wood. So uh, if you don't have access to an impact, um, that is one way to do it. So I'm going to knock the rest of these blades off and I'm going to get to my other video on how I sharpen the blades. Um, but this has been Repairs and Reviews. Uh, thanks for watching.